How do you, airline passengers, breathe at 39,000 feet up in the air inside of an airliner? In today's video, we're going to be talking about air conditioning and pressurization inside of an airliner. More specifically, the Airbus A320. For those of you who do not know me, I am FlyJV, the coolest button on YouTube. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss any of my future videos. The air conditioning system of the Airbus A320 is fully automatic and concerns three fully independent zones. The cockpit, the forward cabin and the aft cabin. Air is taken directly from the engine via the engine bleed duct. Air from the engine obviously is very very hot and warm. So it is sent through a device that is called a pack. Essentially a pack is a device that takes warm air and turns it into cold air. The air from the engine is ducted via the pack flow valve through which it enters the pack and gets into a primary heat exchanger. That primary heat exchanger cools that air and it then goes through the compressor which compresses it increasing the pressure and increasing the temperature. That air is then sent to the main heat exchanger where it is further cooled and then sent into the turbine where it is expanded. That expansion removes the energy from that air, making it colder, and then it leaves the pack. There are two packs on the Airbus A320. Each of them is fully independent of the other. They are globally regulated by a machine called the zone controller, which in turn controls each pack controller, which is associated with each individual pack. The zone controller mixes inputs from the cockpit and what is required by the system to basically regulate the temperature. Upon exiting the packs, the new colder air and fresh air is sent into the mixing unit. Cold new air is mixed in with recirculated air from the cabin. From that mixing unit, there are three possible exits to go to each independent section. The cockpit, the forward cabin, or the aft cabin. The air coming out of the packs is very cold, so to optimize the regulation of that temperature, there is something called a hot air pressure regulation valve. Air is tapped directly upstream of the pack, meaning it is still the warm air from the engines that is ducted directly through that valve. Passing that hot air pressure regulation valve, it goes to one of three trim air valves. This hot air is mixed into the cold air coming out of the pack and then the mixing unit, allowing the air to be exactly at the temperature that the flight crew wants or that the system requires. Rest assured, if one pack fails, the other one will take over. And in the unlikely event that both packs fail, then there is something called an emergency ram air inlet that is also connected to the mixing unit, which can be opened by the flight crew to be able to basically supply air directly from the outside for circulation inside of the cabin. In the event that there is smoke inside of the cabin, this emergency ram air inlet can also be used to remove that smoke and get it overboard. What happens inside of the cockpit? The flight crew, meaning both pilots, have control of the temperature of the cabin and of the cockpit via the air conditioning panel. On this panel, there are four main knobs. One that controls the flow of air, three that control the temperature of each individual section. The first knob, which regulates the flow, has three possible positions, low, normal, or high. In low, 80% is circulated, in normal, 100%, and in high, 120%. Low is used in flights where there are not that many passengers. Normal is used in most flights that you will take uh, as a passenger. And high is used for flights which are unusually hot and humid. The three other knobs are simply temperature selectors where basically the pilots can choose a temperature between 18 degrees and 30 degrees for each individual zone. Now, if one of the flight attendants or one of the passengers feels like it's either too hot or too cold, the flight attendants will come see us and advise us so that we can actually change the temperature and make the flight more comfortable for you. Now, when it comes to the flight attendants and the cabin crew, they also have the possibility to change the temperature but to a much lesser degree than the pilot i decide to put a temperature of 24 degrees using the forward attendant panel one of the flight attendants can change the temperature within plus or minus 2.5 degrees celsius meaning 
with that 24 degrees that I set, she can either put 26.5 or 21.5. Now let's move on to pressurization. How do you actually breathe at these high altitudes? Well, it is simple. Pressurization works based on something that is called cabin altitude. Let me explain. As human beings, we roughly can breathe from surface level to roughly 10,000 feet. Above these altitudes, the air pressure becomes so low that it's impossible to get the air and the oxygen inside of your lungs, which basically causes hypoxia, loss of consciousness, and eventually asphyxiation, death. Sorry for the interruption, but I got something really cool that I need to show you right now. I travel a lot. I like simplicity, I like style, and most of all, I like security. If you had to leave the house right now to go for a flight, or even if you're not a pilot and you had to go for a trip or run an errand, which one would you choose? That's what I thought. Frankly, I would do the same thing. This little piece of high-end technology has made my life a lot easier when it comes to carrying money and cards when I'm traveling. It is called the Extra Wallet. I can make quick purchases no matter where I go without worrying about this awkward bulge in my pants that my old big wallet used to make. You can pop out all your cards in one click and hold money using this. Watch this. Using this app, I can call my wallet to actually find out where it is and I can actually use the GPS tracker to find it. Bye bye theft, bye bye loss. So be smart. The extra wallet can be tracked worldwide and called via an app on your phone using solar powered trackers with solar charge lasting up to three months with only two hours of charge. The tracker is slim and fits right here. The wallet is radio frequency identification protected, meaning you are protected from identity theft and skimming. Exter is having a Black Friday sale up to November 29th for up to 40% off on all of their products site-wide. Use my link in the description down below and get yours right now. You can thank me later. Don't miss out, YJV crew. Thank you. Let's get back to the video. In normal operation, the pressurization of the aircraft is done automatically. Air pressure follows an external schedule which it receives from the aircraft's computers, and sensors. The pressurization process is basically divided into four different functions and each of these functions is coupled to one or multiple modes. The first function is the ground function which is coupled to the ground mode. This mode basically means that the aircraft is completely open and receiving air from the outside. It is depressurized and the outflow valve which we'll come to in a second is completely open. Next is pre-pressurization function, which is coupled to the takeoff mode. The pre-pressurization function and the takeoff mode basically pressurizes the aircraft before the rotation. It's to avoid a surge at rotation of the pressure. If there was no pre-pressurization, the moment the pilots rotate and start climbing, there would be an increase in the pressure following the fact that the aircraft is now going up. It would create a startle effect for the passengers and it would create discomfort for them. So basically, it is all done for you. Let's move on to the next function, which is the in-flight function. This function is coupled to three modes, climb, cruise, and descent. During climb, the cabin altitude varies based on a fixed pre-programmed law that takes into account basically the aircraft's actual rate of climb. During cruise, the controller maintains altitude at the level of or at the landing field elevation, whichever is higher. During descent, the controller maintains a cabin rate of descent, such as the cabin pressure is equal to the landing field pressure plus 0.1 PSI, shortly before the landing. The last function is depressurization and it is coupled with ground mode. After landing, 55 seconds after the main landing gears have been compressed, ground mode will take over and the outflow valve will completely open again making way for the ambient air to actually enter the cabin and resume for another rotation if need be. The pressurization is controlled essentially by two cabin pressure controllers. These cabin pressure controllers are digital controllers which are connected to the outflow valve via an electrical motor. Think of the outflow valve as a pressure maintenance valve. 
it basically controls how much air is allowed to flow outside of the cabin. The outflow valve is on the right hand side of the fuselage behind the aft cargo compartment and below the flotation line. It is a, an assembly that consists of a flush skin mounted rectangular frame which carries inward and outward opening flaps linked to an actuator. The actuator is connected to the drives of the three motors. Two automatic via the CPCs and one manual that can be used manually by the flight crew. One CPC is active while the other is in standby during the whole flight. After landing, 70 seconds after the main landing gear has been compressed, they will switch over for the next flight. For your safety, if one of the CPCs fails, the other one will take over and in the unlikely event that both fail, there is a, an alternative which is basically manual control by the captain or the first officer in the cockpit by pressing the manual button. The cabin pressure controllers will always make sure to maintain the cabin altitude below 8,000 feet. However, if that is exceeded at 9,550 feet of cabin altitude, the flight crew will be alerted. At 11,000 feet of cabin altitude, signs will turn on, meaning you will see the seat belt sign turn on by itself without any cockpit action. At 14,000 feet of cabin altitude, the masks will automatically drop for the passengers to be supplied with oxygen for 15 minutes. In case the pressurization inside of the cabin exceeds limits, there are two safety valves or pressure relief valves, if you will, that will open if either of these values is exceeded. Above 8.6 PSI or below minus one PSI. These safety valves are located on the rear pressure bulkhead of the aircraft. Thank you FlyJV crew for watching this video. This video is aimed at everybody so that they can have a better understanding of the pressurization in flight. But if you feel like there's anything that you need to add, leave it in the comment. If you have any questions, leave that in the comments as well so I can reply. Make sure to join the Discord so you can talk to me and other members of the FlyJV crew. And if you haven't done so already, get your FlyJV merch. The link is in the description down below. And that was me. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the bell notifications. I'm out.